John chapter 20. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping in to look, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as of yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but I go to my brothers and to say to them, I am ascending to the Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hands into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet 
have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. It's a good book, right? <laughs> it's not over. We still got John 21, but it's, it's basically over. John 21 is a, kind of a, a fun tack-on to the book of John. What a conclusion to a book. If we've read this whole book together, I hope that you see the beauty here. All of the strands are picked up and, and wrapped up in such an unbelievable way. Not to say that the other books of the Bible don't do that, but John is so well-crafted with a purpose and an intent. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's supremely beautiful. And not the book, but what it says about our reality, about who we are, about who God is, and ultimately about Jesus Christ and that we can believe in him, that we may believe in him. That if you heard these words, you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is not a story. This is not a fairy tale. This is something more than that. This is something much more than that. This is something of supreme importance. Because here and only here may you have life. And only through this man, who is not just a man, do you believe that? That's what the book is asking. That's what the word of God is asking. Anyway, <laughs> I think the book of John is a book that we could read time and time and time again. And it would never even come close to the, the end of it. It would always have something more to give. And in this reading, I want to share in a couple minutes what I, what I got out of it that's different. And I think the most powerful thing out of the whole thing, and I, don't, I haven't even figured it out yet but here it is right but for me in the past it was always belief and, and without a doubt belief is the key to the book of john it is the goal of the book the goal of the book is that these things are written so that you may believe that's what the book is here to do that you may encounter jesus come and see who he is these words show who he is but throughout john this time there is the sense of the importance of the fact that Jesus was sent from the Father. And here, first words to the disciple, peace be with you, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. That line is found throughout John, John 3, John 6, right? Throughout John. I, I can't remember off the top of my head the other ones, but if you read through the book of John, it's just all over the place. That I was sent from the Father. And to believe that. And that now I am sending you. We're brought into this Trinitarian relationship here. And so we, whatever it is, have to believe that Jesus was sent from the Father. He's not just another man. He is a man with a mission. From the Father. Before the creation of the world. And that is a central idea in the book of John. That he doesn't come from our world. Where did he come from? He came from outside of our world, from the Father, from heaven, to us. To bring us something we could not bring ourselves. We could not bring life. We could not bring revelation. Only Jesus can do that. 
And that's also what John tries to tell us. And that's what I got out of it in this reading.